Welcome in, everybody. It's Friday, and it's another episode of We Have the High Ground. Sort of short. Who knows how long it's going to go today, because we really got one big topic to talk about today. It's me and Boggs, of course, but we got a fresh face. It's producer Sean, executive producer Sean, the leader, the creator of the pop culture universe himself. Thank you for coming on the show today, man. How are you uh, Thank you for having me. Finally, my schedule allowed me to, to come in at, right. and hang out with you guys, so um, nice to be here. Well, Boggs, how are you doing, sir? Yeah, well, good, man. Obviously, an interesting story to talk about today, um, but yeah, let's. Uh, I'm, I'm really good. How are you? Doing good, doing good. We got a busy week of stuff going on over here, and really, it was it, it's it's always news when it's a Disney, you know, investor call, right? You you got always going to get news coming out of it. But before we get to the big news of the week, we always have a new guest, and we like to get to know what their Star Wars story is. So, Sean, tell the folks how is it that Star Wars came into your life? Um. <sighs> I mean, as a kid of the 80s, it was just kind of like always there. I never, my brain doesn't remember a time when Star Wars wasn't around. But as a kid, it wasn't prevalent. It was just always just kind of like in the background. It was always on TV, on regular TV, on the weekends, playing in the background where me and my brother were playing around. It just was always on TV. So it's not really until The Phantom Menace when I actually saw a Star Wars movie in the theaters. That was the first Star Wars movie I actually saw in the theaters. Because I didn't go to the re-releases. I should have. But I didn't. Um, so Phantom Menace was the first. Obviously was disappointed. Saw Clone Wars. Disappointed some more. Attack of the Clone, sorry. Disappointed some more. Revenge I'm sure of the you were disappointed during Clone Wars as well. I, I, don't even, I don't even think I remember seeing that in the theaters. I don't think I did. I almost walked out. Um... Either ways, um, so Star Wars has just been, it's gotten more and more important as I've gotten along. What really actually filled in a lot of the gaps was the Star Wars uh, video games. So the S Super NES, I had that, and then playing all the Star Wars video games, the super versions of all three, uh, kept my Star Wars fa um, fandom going for a while there. But uh, it was more or less just the prequels were the first movies I I saw in the theaters, but I've obviously saw the, the original trilogies thousands of times before then. So, um, but yeah, I, I, I would I would label myself as a casual Star Wars fan because I'm not really going to like read any of the books. I'm eventually going to. I started watching Clone Wars, like I told you guys before. I have to pick it up again. I didn't see Rebels. I will watch that. Um, so, because I want to start watching the Bad Batch when that comes out in May. So, uh, but I would, I would call myself a casual Star Wars fan, but with my tip over the edge of like trying to uh, go further than that. You're, you're, you're interested in it, which you, yeah. you're, 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 you're intrigued by like, Oh, what are these kids on here talking about all the time about like, I mean, people go for hours about Rebels. Like, we, Boggs and I can sit here and do a three-hour discussion of the importance of Star Wars Rebels. And it's like, it, you see the intrigue and the investment that people have. And you're like, oh, well, there's probably a reason for that. So at least you'll give it a shot. I know some people, they won't even they won't even dabble in the animation parts of it at all. But they'll go see the movies. They'll watch the TV show. And I got tons of friends. Well, they'll, I'm in a, I'm in a group chat with five of friends from college. And how many times during The Mandalorian were they like, Who's this a soul girl? I'm like, well, you got to go watch this cartoon. And they're like, eh, I don't know about that. Yeah. <laughs> and then automatically throws them off. Yeah, I mean, that's that's unfortunate. There's going to be people who who never give all those other animated shows a chance because they're anim animated. And that's that's where they'll draw the line. So it's unfortunate. But it is what it is. Yep. Well, I want to know what Sean's oh, favorite oh, movie oh, yeah. as well. We normally ask. Oh, what's Empire. your Star Wars story and what's your favorite? Okay. Empire. Fair enough. Um, but I would I would also say Rogue One is, is really high up there too. I really liked Rogue One only because it was just so different from the other ones. Mm -hmm. I like I like the idea when they originally said, "Oh, we're gonna do Star Wars story movies. We're gonna be different." I was like, "Yeah, I love different. Why not?" And mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. the version we got of Rogue One isn't the re the pl version that they planned. But even still, I still love the way that that movie turned out, and I wish that, cut of that 
Well, yeah, I don't think I don't think we're ever getting I don't think we're ever getting that. The scene but, where she um, almost like dies to the Tie Fighter at the top of the thing, where they're like staring each other down. It mm. was gonna get pretty dark. Well, they they reshot that whole third act. If you mm. if you go back and watch the trailers of the the original trailers of Rogue One, it's completely different from mm. what we got. So, um, I don't think we'll ever see that footage ever again. But it is what it is. But yeah, Rogue One is really high up there. Especially that Vader scene, just like, which wow. is another last minute uh, yep, kind of thing. Was. That was mm-hmm. that was because of the whole, uh, yeah. But there's loads of shots in, as you said, in the trailer that didn't make it. But no, nah, yeah, I, I could have guessed you're an Empire guy, but I thought I'd check just in case. Oh well, no, well, hey. yeah. Rogue One's going to be one of those asked. films that appreciates over time. There's definitely going to be like there are less faults in it than people realize. I think it got a lot of smack and got had a, it was very. Was looked under uh, through a very tight lens for a long time. It was really all we had, and it. I, I love do you that. have also, Sean? Do you have a favorite character? Because I want to know because I find it interesting when someone doesn't like okay in inverted commas like the prequels, uh, and then they are a Star Wars fan. I'm thinking, okay, so where is their kind of where's that in then obviously it's with the original trilogy but what's keeping you tied in that for 20 years do you know what i mean so uh, i always find that that uh i mean i mean i guess by default it would have to be luke um yeah because i remember always picking him um in the game in the star wars games you don't have to always <laughs> use luke but i always did use luke because maybe because i was yeah. like the lightsaber so uh versus a blaster yeah, it would have to be a look. Okay. okay. That's correct. That's, That's a good great. choice. Well, someone who actually has a lot of say into the future of Star Wars, now confirmed as we move on to the main topic of today's episode, Kathleen Kennedy, confirmed by Disney CEO Bob Chapek this week to be staying on as the president of Lucasfilm for years to come. We got this. I'm going to throw it over to you, Boggs, for your initial reaction to this news. What was your first thought when this came across? You know, you started hearing it. You're like, oh, was it a sense of, oh, good, or uh, could have been someone else? I'd say more the second. Um, I'm not as, like, because, well, I think it's fair to say, like, some people are genuinely actually gutted with this news. Um, I do think I'm not at that level, but, like, you know, for me that she's, you know, she is, um, she's, I don't know. I just, I feel like she's as a producer, obviously she's one of the best of all time. There's no dispute there, but in terms of a creative head of star Wars, creative head of Lucasfilm, um, I would like to see literally a creative head, creative head, head in charge. Someone, you know, again, like obviously a lot of people saying like Filoni and, and Favreau, you know, like a descendant, like, you know, they're, Lucas's apprentices, you know, Lucas taught these guys, and that's what I was hoping for. And also, I kind of bought into the stories that she was going to leave. You know, I believe her contract finishes next year or this year. So it's, it I believe was supposed she was... to finish summer of 2021, prior right. to because Indiana Jones was supposed to be the final film of her contract, and right. it was supposed to be released initially summer of this year. Mm. So, and when that film was released, that was the last one of her contract. So although we've got this statement, which you're going to come to, right? Yes, sir. Is that which she hasn't actually extended a contract. So technically it still finishes this year. Although they've said, again, you're going to come to it, that it's not, um, they're looking forward to her to be involved in everything that she's done. So they've not actually said that a contract's getting extended or, you know, or anything like that. It was quite a generic statement. Um, so I find that interesting. But yeah, but to be fair, I mean, Star Wars right now is really well positioned. So I am kind of... Um, I was hoping for creative head in, to be the head of Lucasfilm, but where Star Wars is at the minute with all the projects coming, um, you know, what we talked about and um, all the excitement, previous investor announcements and Mandalorian and all kinds of stuff. So I'm excited for that. But this, I wasn't kind of overly excited for. No, I'm not, I, I can't lie. And uh, Sean, as I get this quote ready, what were your, you know, initial reactions as well? This to me is just kind of, uh, I, I honestly wasn't expecting this kind of news because this wasn't like a big production like the last investor thing we did this was just a regular old call. investor yeah. call but we got some yeah. pretty big news 
I mean, I think this is these are what these calls normally are. I think the only reason we got the last one is because there was no D twenty three, there's no Comic Con, so they just had to kind of have to figure their own way of announcing all these things. But for uh, for me, uh, Bob saying that is just like, yeah, that's what he's supposed to say. I mean, for me, I get Bob's. I get what, what you're saying, hundred percent. That uh, you prefer mm-hmm. someone with um, a little bit more uh, like a a. a, a a Kevin Feige type sure. running Lucasfilm. But for me, it's like, remember, well, George Lucas picked her to run it. Mm-hmm. So he picked her for a reason. And I can understand that, you know, the movies aren't as good as we all would like. But to Disney's point of view, they all made over a billion dollars. And that's all they care about. They don't care about what the fan. Oh, some of the fans think this, some of the fans mm-hmm. think that. Well, the fans still paid the money. Mm-hmm. Fans still paid the money. Fans are loving Mandalorian season one. They love Mandalorian season two. They're hyped about all the other shows, and she's the head of that. So she's again. If you want to give her slack for the for the movies, I get that because obviously Solo didn't perform as well. So as mo- as much money as the the sequel trilogy made, Solo didn't make a lot. But then the prequels made. Um, all the shows are doing really well. So she's got to get credit there. So for me. It's really not that much of a surprise that they, they, they wanted to stay. Will she end up staying? Maybe, maybe not, but it's not a surprise that they want her to stay. Yeah, and as we take a look at this quote, we've been absolutely thrilled that we can have the creative talent in our company, with the likes of Kathleen Kennedy. We look forward to having Kathleen directing Lucasfilm activities for years to come. That's the part where I'm like, okay, seems like they're invested in her, and I'm I'm curious because when, when we look at like the descendant stuff here, Boggs, you talked directly about like Filoni coming directly from George. Kathleen's a direct descendant of Steven Spielberg. It's two different types of, I think, approaches to storytelling are Steven Spielberg and George Lucas. Both would inquire on help on each other's projects, but definitely were not like the same type of. Uh, I don't know, like nerdiness. I don't, I, I don't know how to put that. It just seems like you know, like Steven Spielberg doesn't have a slice in the sh- movie trivia showdown inner geekdom division, d- right? But Indiana Jones and Star Wars does. You know, it's just something a bit geekier about those types of films. And Kathleen hasn't really ever given that sense of like, I'm a geek like you too. I geek out over this stuff. There's always just been a sense of like, this is a business. This is always going to be a business for me, and all this is a business to sit. Every every one of these decisions is a business decision. Getting rid of um, the guys who went on to do uh, uh, Spider Man. Talk about Lord and Miller. Lord, Lord and Miller. Miller. Getting rid of them off of Solo. Getting um, the first guy off of uh, Rogue One. And then having to bring, uh, it, they didn't like Gareth Edwards finish the mm-hmm. film. They brought in Tony Gilroy to finish the film, and she's made decisions. Like she, they've always just been so polarizing. I don't know why, but everything, and I that's kind of the thing that I want to get into a bit. I think is a conversation we haven't had is like, why is it that she feels so comfortable with just removing people from films and then you know just keeping it keep it going i don't know because it seems like those decisions i don't know if she's thinks about how we view her now like that's where the negativity and stuff comes from me is like it's you usually trust these people to go do the film they're going to go do and usually it's the right move but when you take those people off of solo and they go make arguably the best spider-man movie of all time and then solo is the most underperforming star wars movie of all time that was kind of where the red flags first started going off for me but the tv stuff she's really good at all that boggs is the is this stuff that she's doing with tv indiana jones willow all this other stuff is that speaking more to disney in your opinion than star wars maybe as a whole maybe that's not how luke lucasfilm is viewed by the uppers at disney maybe lucasfilm is viewed as this just production house that just churns out billion dollar films and we just trust them to make billion dollar films yeah maybe um in terms of 
you know, you also mentioned that listening to us, the fans, I mean, they're way past that stage now. I mean, they're, as Sean said, her four, out of the five movies that they dropped, four of them hit over a billion dollars. You know, Force Awakens hitting two billion. So the money's there. You know, she, she's killing it on that front. So, and of course, the Disney Plus subscribers as well, you know, in such a short time that I think there are like 100 million subscribers in what a year. So again, she's killing it on that. So seemingly to the suits, you know, to the, um, to the, to the, as a corporation, there's, there's, you know, she's the number one choice, of course, there's, there's not even a dispute. Um, but for us, like, for me, in terms of what you've also mentioned there, that I think the reason why that is happening, um, why these directors are going, because they haven't got a plan in these stories that, you know, like in the, in the uh, sequel trilogy or some of the other side stories like Solo, um, they, they didn't have a plan. They didn't have an overall plan. So that, in accordance to um, people coming in and, and their decisions uh, being changed or uh, story, you know, stories not being agreed to, whatever, they're getting people out, getting people in to fit their agendas, fit their narratives. But people like, for example, the polar opposite to this is something like people like The Mandalorian, who are obviously the showrunners of Favreau and Filoni. They've kind of set the template of how to do a, a full end-to-end -end structured show, you know, being, you know, a hardcore fan, if you will, uh, and obviously a great storyteller as well. Um, and then you haven't heard them, you know, stories of directors leaving there or kind of stories changing or, or um, you know, storylines being kind of altered or, or creatives, you know, coming in and out, that kind of thing. Because, uh, you know, they have a story, they have a plan. So, uh, and then having, you know, for me, having people like, yeah, again, seemingly, you know, they are, they are good storytellers, people like Ryan Johnson or J.J. Abrams come in. Um, but for me, they're not hardcore, they're good filmmakers, but they're not Star Wars guys in of themselves so um they're the kind of decisions that i get frustrated by but as a in terms of what you're saying going into the other lucasfilm products i kind of see it as a, as a bonus because if she imagine just her working as a producer on the thing uh on these kind of new properties like it they you know she's one of the best producers of all time that's not a dispute i want to see her produce uh indiana jones i want to see her produce willow things like that um to, for her to make or be involved in the creative decisions, it is frustrating at times. But at the same time, at times she has got it right as well. Like in The Mandalorian, you know, she does appoint these guys to be the showrunners, and that's what I want to see more of. You know, moving forward, you know, she's no one's not redeemable. Uh, although I do have you know major issues in terms of the story elements or creative elements in what she's done. Like she can't, like she's not like that. She can still improve on this. She can still uh, make the right decisions. Um, but yeah, like at times during the sequel trilogy run. I felt like the apple has fall, fallen very, very far from the tree in terms of the creative or overall Star Wars arc, like that what Lucas has set up and built. Um, but she has kind of brought it back with the Mandalorian. So, uh, yeah, very interesting moving forward. Um, yes, but I would like to see more proper, full-on Star Wars people be involved in the creative start um, in these projects from the start, not kind of people coming in and out who, who make kind of successful movies or successful products. I'm not interested in that. I want to see proper Star Wars people uh, telling good stories, basically. So I don't know if that answers your question, Colin. I think you're on mute, Colin. But, um, Sorry, you keep wanting to bring in the conversation around like a Kevin Feige type, right? So somebody to come, at least the structure yeah. of how he handles the overall narrative of the Marvel Universe. And to me, uh, at least having somebody on set like that like if you told me that dave filoni was going to be on set of every star wars movie making sure that everything felt star wars -y, i would that would make me feel better because you know you, you go back and kasdan is doing uh you know, everybody on five and six obviously lucas didn't direct five and six and but he was there the whole time right making sure that his vision was Colin, he's there the whole time for the mandalorian as well right yeah, right. This is I what mean, I mean, he's, yeah. he's around. But for yeah, the yeah, but yeah. for the sequels, he's not right. He doesn't even go right. to the premieres, which is like, oh, like that's a, such a telltale sign, and it's just like, it's so frustrating. You know, the creativity isn't there uh, on these products, and it hasn't got his steel of approval, which I would like. So, uh, but yeah, sorry to interrupt you. No, yeah. no, you're fine. So, Sean, I'll throw it to you this way. So, would you rather see like? Like, Kathleen is a fantastic producer, right? Like, but at the same time, she has shown like the ability to be a fantastic president. Can she be both at the same time? Um, I think she can be. I think she's learning on the job, but at the same time, 
she's making good decisions, but she's also not at the same time. Like I was intrigued by Lord and Miller being hired to do Star Wars. I was like, oh, that's an interesting take. Mm -hmm. Them doing a solo movie. Didn't want solo to begin with, but once we were getting it, it, you know. But the reason she fired them was because they were doing, they were just going off the cuff. They were just shooting improv. That's not what they were hired to do. Now, could you, so I understand why she got rid of them. My only complaint with her would be like, you waited till they were like almost two weeks done to get rid of them. That's more of the, that's more of where my like eyebrow got raised. Like you were seeing the dailies all this time. You were seeing what they were doing all this time. It's not the decision to fire them. It was when she fired them. So I could, I can give her a slack for that. But the, I, the sequel trilogy, I think the biggest problem with that was, is that she should have went to JJ and say, other JJ, you're directing all three, or I want you to direct the first one and and then plan out the second two because i think the the biggest problem with the with the sequel trilogy is that there was no plan um it was kind of like when george was doing the original trilogy and he had uh luke kiss leia was like or leia kiss luke it's like uh if you had a plan you would have known that they were brother and sister you wouldn't have done that so it's like she she's learning but again i i can't see she doesn't have enough of a a negative track record for me to for her to be fired or for her to let, be let go because as much as we I like Force Awakens I really do Last Jedi was really good as well it's the it's the last one is Rise of Skywalker we're just like mm, all those things that if you had a plan it would have been so the, the seeds were there for it to be better and it just because there was no plan it just kind of fell apart but considering we're getting the Mandalorian we're getting the Book of Boba Fett, all these shows that we're all super excited about. She's a part of that. And I can understand where you guys said, like, well, maybe Dave Filoni would be a better uh, person to be in charge. Well, maybe that's maybe we don't know if he wants to be in charge or if he has the 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 mindset or to be in charge. He is per, we, we know what he is and he's good at that. Why risk putting him in a position where we don't know what he if he's going to be comfortable in that? He's good exactly where he is. So I would rather just keep him there and then just um, Kathleen Kennedy, just find people who want to tell good stories. Like Boggs, you said, I want Star Wars people. I don't think we're, we're always going to get Star Wars people because yeah. like, if you want to compare it to the MCU, we don't always get Marvel people. Kevin Feige said, I just want to hire people who could tell good stories. So if you could tell a good story inside the Marvel universe, that's what he's interested in. So if someone could find, if Kathleen Kennedy could find people who want to tell good stories inside the Star Wars universe, that's her number one job. Like she brought in um, Patty Jenkins. I'm really curious to see her her Rogue Squadron movie. We don't know what that thing's going to be, but the fact that they got Patty Jenkins, you know, she's coming off Wonder Woman 1984, but I'm still excited to see what she's going to bring to the Star Wars universe. I don't know if she's necessarily a hardcore Star Wars fan, but she doesn't necessarily have to be. She could be like, hey, you know, I was kicking around this idea about Star Wars. I really want, I'm passionate about this story. Let me do that. And Kathleen Kennedy's like, yeah, sure, let's do it. So um, I don't necessarily know if, I mean, I don't know. I, that, that, yeah, that, that's it. <laughs> no, we well, hear you. It's a, yeah, to me, I think she's done a good job of getting people in that intrigue like you describe yourself the casual fan getting patty jenkins gets you more on board than them saying we got some unknown to come in and direct this rogue squadron movie because you probably don't have any affinity to rogue squadron unless you played one of the video games or you read the books so unless you so there's not some form of attachment there now it's Patty Jenkins. And so that was something that I was able to show my girlfriend. And she was like, oh, Wonder Woman director is doing a Star Wars movie. That sounds awesome. A female's directing a Star Wars movie. Fantastic. And so it's all these different ways. Patty's doing all the right things. She's checking all the boxes. So I throw this to one last bit of the conversation because, Box, I'm loving all the stuff we're getting. And I'm going to throw this list back up one more time. 
we just talked about rogue squadron but look at all the variations and stuff that we're getting here we're getting visions which is an anime show that's going to be all these different voices being able to come in and tell their story so i think she is turning back to this producer role like really stepping back i think she's really letting these letting these creative voices come in and tell their stories because honestly this is too much i don't i don't think she can have i think <laughs> all this stuff which it it seemed might have been to her detriment only having one production going on at lucasfilm at a time for a while right really only had the force awakens maybe some clone wars episodes or rebels episodes uh the, the cartoons are going on in the background but when it comes to the film stuff they were really only one at a time for a while and now with all of this I mean, this is a full-blown... I mean, this is what Disney puts out by themselves. And this is a whole branch of Disney. So, what 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 out of this are you really looking forward to the most that we haven't talked about, Box? Is it something that's Star Wars related or non-Star Star Wars related? So, I just want to quickly comment on something that you both mentioned there in terms of the directors and stuff. So, for me, I think one of the issues that people have with Kathleen Kennedy is that the... It doesn't get me excited anymore to hear a director be um, at the helm of a Star Wars project. It has to be more. Like, for example, you know, because let's say um, you guys say, obviously, Patty Jenkins, right? Without a Star Wars, someone affiliated with Star Wars, or we know that they have some kind of creative involvement in Star Wars, their recent track history for me has missed. So I'm not massively excited when I do that. Or... For example, we've had numerous announcements that have been cancelled, like you, like we just covered, Lord and Miller cancelled or removed, uh, and then obviously brought Ron Howard in. The Game of Thrones guys, Benioff and Weiss, cancelled. Um, Colin Chiraro, removed. So just naming someone isn't enough. That's that's no way near going to be good enough. And that's usually for after some something bad happened. That's usually after one. I don't of know. Their films. Well, you, you mentioned Trevorrow. That's after the second Jurassic World or whatever. It was that uh, the book of Henry, the I think, book came of out. Henry, yeah, yeah. The book yeah, of Henry came out. It. it was a couple of things, and then, well, then you yanked the Star have... Wars movie from him. It's, it's, yeah, it's those kind Did of. Did you decisions. read his script? I loved it, I man. Loved like it. I, some of the concept art we for it, it was on unreal. That. It was unreal, man. I was so hyped up for that. I've seen concept art with it with people putting music in, and like, oh, I want to see that movie still, even now. Uh, hopefully we see a Conor Trevorrow cut. Yeah, 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 exactly. the Trevorrow cut. Yeah, it works with anything, right? So, but yeah, no, these are all the frustrations that people have. Um, with just to confirm, you know, I do kind of like the Force Awakens. The other two, I do not like. Um, Rogue One's nice. Rogue One's nice as well, and, and I do like Solo. So I'm not like uh, anti, you know, sequels or anti Disney or or Kennedy or anything like that. But for me, like my heart is with the Lucas era stuff, and. Um, and I've seen this in, I did see it in Rebels and The Mandalorian. And because that's ran completely differently, uh, I want to see that in the overall, in other Lucasfilm properties. But from that list that you showed me, Colin, I definitely, no doubt in my mind, well, obviously, in terms of Star Wars, it's Obi-Wan. Of course, that's one of the most thing I'm looking forward to. Obviously, being held by Deborah Chow and Dave Filoni and, you know, and, uh, you know, Ewan McGregor and, you know, and, uh, Hayden Christian. Oh, I can't wait for that. But the non-Star Wars thing, Indiana Jones, like... That's one of my favorite all times. Uh, I hope they get it right so badly. Uh, you know, that, that means a lot to a lot of people. Um, so, yes, it's, it's from that list, it's Indiana Jones. Obviously, don't know nothing about it. Um, but um, I know I believe uh, they did announce the director. It was James. Um, who's a James director. Mangold. Yeah, James Mangold, yeah. So we have the director, obviously. Quick we curveball. Got the forecast. Would you rather James Mangold, Logan, this movie, and backdoor the new i mean he 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 has a proven track record of using an older character and funneling in the younger version of that character in the film would you rather him do that well or would you rather just see one last ride with indy just just indy you know you don't need to try to feed me some new generation chris pratt nothing yet i would say I would say personally, personally, I would say one last ride with Indy, um, because I don't, I don't totally hate the Crystal Skull as much as other people do. Um, so that was, it's like, it's just like a silly movie, whatever. But I want like a good emotional send off for him, um, because we, we've seen the kind of old man Western thing, obviously with Logan. But I've got to be honest, with Logan, I'm not as much in love with it as everyone else is. So I like it, 
Uh, I'm not like, oh my god, it's the best old, uh, you know, superhero movie, or, or not for me. It's not even the best X Men movie for me personally, but uh, I do like it, of course. I'm not not disputing that. So I I want a better send off for indie. But yeah, I want to hear uh, Sean's thoughts as well. Yeah, Sean, are you more interested in like? Uh, I mean, I'll ask you the same question. I want to hear your non Lucasfilm opinion on which one you want to hear. But then I am interested. Which one of these new things the casual Star Wars fan is interested in? I think I think Sean's a Willow guy. By no, I'm not, no, I'm actually not a Willow guy. Um, I I'm, I, I, I'm curious about something you see. You said something in your boxes, like yeah. you're kind of giving her credit for this for the movies, but not That's... for the shows. I'm like, you can't do that. She's in charge uh... of both. She's in no, charge no, she, of both. Yeah. No, no, she's appointed so, the guys, right? So yeah, she gets credit for that. Absolutely. Yeah, she, she, she again. You want she gets she has to get credit for she gets credit and blame all the way around. But mm -hmm. um. So the list you brought up, I, I kind of agree with Boggs. It is Obi Wan. I am fascinated about what you you McGregor is going to do in this. Uh, the fact that Hayden Christian is coming back, what that what actually does that mean? Are we getting flashbacks? Is he going to be in the in a Darth Vader suit? Who knows? I don't know. Nice. But like nice. that's just something I want to see. Um, I and I'm I'm actually glad that it's a show, not a movie. So that I, I I give her credit for that because it was supposed to be a movie and they pivoted to being a TV show, which I think it'll work better in. So props her for that. And uh, but and I am also interested to see this Rogue Squadron movie because it's not based on the games, it's not based on the books. Patty Jenkins said it's just going to be her own thing. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, I like the idea of just X Wing, a group of like X Wing pilots just going off an adventure. Uh, who knows? So, if it's anything like the games, uh, is is uh, they take some liberties from the games. I'm in. I love. I used to love those games. Mm -hmm. uh, and I agree with Boggs again. Indiana Jones. Uh, I love Indiana Jones. I love um, the Last Crusade. Is my favorite Indiana Jones movie. I love that one. I think the chemistry with him and Sean Connery is just. Ah, it's great. Yeah. I, I'm so sad they couldn't get him back for Crystal Skull, but you know mm -hmm. he was retired by then, and and nothing could get him out of that. But I do want to just see one last ride of indie. I know eventually that pro that IP is too valuable just to be like, all right, well we'll do Indiana's Five and just let it sit there forever. They're eventually going to reboot it. So give give uh, Harrison Ford his proper send off because Crystal Skull is just. That's not a good way to to leave that character and that legacy. Give him one last movie by himself, then wait maybe five ten years and completely reboot it and start from scratch. Scratch, because then you can really do indie proper, where you can really build up to him. You could do really a young indie, kind of like how they're doing uh, Tom Holland in, in Uncharted. You can kind of start that way with indie, and eventually fill in the gaps or even if you don't want to necessarily reboot it you can fill in the gaps of his stories with the younger indie like these are some other adventures he went on in between the things that we already saw so there's possibilities that they can do but yeah i agree with box just give harrison ford because he's getting up there in age so they gotta really um hurry up and shoot this thing because i'm sad that we're not getting steven spielberg to shoot it like we were supposed to but mm -hmm. all the pushbacks and then COVID happened and um so he wasn't able to do it but as long as we still get it and it's good, then yeah, I'm I'm excited for for Indiana Jones Five, or whatever it's gonna be called. Yeah, for me, if it comes to Star Wars, um, Rogue Squadron sticks out because it's the only confirmed piece of Star Wars that takes place after Episode Nine. So mm -hmm. very intrigued by that. For the outside of the Star Wars stuff, it's Children of Blood and Bone. This story, I think, is going to be has the potential to be the next Harry Potter, and I'm not even joking. This is going to be the it's like combining the culture of Africa with the mysticism and expansiveness of Harry Potter, and the novels are fantastic, and it's going to really give Lucasfilm a whole new audience that they've never had before it's age spanning a whole new side of the world i mean it's gonna be fantastic i think it's really gonna take people by surprise and a great job of really giving her the props of going out and getting a property like that and bringing it into the lucasfilm and making sure that it's done right because i think it has the potential to be another billion dollar franchise <laughs> so get ready for it 
because it's coming. Uh, Sean, throw to you, man. Final thoughts and uh, on this Kathleen Kennedy stuff. Uh, yeah, final thoughts. I just think that you know she's doing a great job, and I th- like you brought up all those things. Like, yeah, she's gonna be involved in all of them, but the same way Kevin Feige is invi- involved in all those things. Like, Marvel's coming out with ten properties this year, and he had his hand in all of it, but he's not involved in all of it. Like, he's overseeing all of it. I think as long as she's overseeing all of it, she can do it and do it well. Um, she she has more um, hits than misses in my book. So the fact that they're keeping her is, to me, a no-brainer. Um, as long as she's putting the right people in place and the communication between her and them is well, is good, I think Lucasfilm is in is in great position going forward. Boggs, is Lucasfilm in the right hands? That's a tough question, Colin. Tough question. Um, I'd like. That's my job. I ask the tough questions here. I mean, with respect. I mean, I. I kind of want to say no, you know, to be honest. I mean, financially, yes. Um, you know, there's no dispute there, you know. If But for me, it's not about the money. You know, this is my favorite property, my favorite franchise, my favorite movies of all time. I want to see the best stories being told. And with her in charge, I haven't seen the best stories being told. In some things I have, yes, uh, the, I'd say Rebels and I'd say Mandalorian. Anything else is, for me, it's not, it's not hitting the mark for me. Um, so overall, like I said, not massively thrilled um, with this announcement. But... Like I said, no one's kind of unredeemable. So she can still, as long as she assigns the right people, as Sean's just said there, I'd be, you know, I can be content with that. Um, and then, you know, if it's financially successful or whatever. But for me, I want to sweat about the story. Uh, and as long as I get that, that's the main thing. So, yes, um, wish all the best and stuff. But I need a good story. Need a good story. Folks, let us know down below in the comments, which of these properties are you most excited to see? Is it Lando? Is it a droid story? Is it season three of The Mandalorian? Or is it Willow? Who knows? But let us know, of course, and like this video, please. But I'll throw it over to my cohorts today. Boggs, where can the fine folks on the internet find you? So yeah, you can uh, you know catch us here. We're dropping a few things in the coming week. Uh, coming to America review. Obviously, we have the high brand every Fridays as well. Um, hopefully, one division review as well coming soon. But uh, yeah, and I'll check out my interview with uh, you know the next Karate Kid actor, Michael Cavalieri. Um, that was really cool with him. Um, and yeah, catch us live on every Saturdays on the, on John Roker's YouTube channel. Uh, that's the Ultimate Schmodown After Show, live every Saturdays, at 3 p.m. PST. So uh, yeah, see you guys there. That's the good stuff. You can find Sean mixing and mastering the producing stuff over there. Producer Sean on Saturdays today. He's co-host Sean. Where where can everyone find you, man? Uh, pretty much everywhere just box it, except uh, you can just find, follow me on Twitter at my name, Sean Barato. And yeah, just we're going to try to, uh, we're actually going to do a um, Coming to America 2 review. Uh, we'll also start previewing Falcon and Winter Soldier because that will start Next, next week, week right? a week yeah, yeah. from today so uh, and, oh justice league come on man i can't we got, wait yeah, for we justice got, league come it's got to carve out four hours to sit down and watch that thing yeah so uh, one hour off. a week i bought the day off by the way no no off. it's it's four hours it's four hours they're dropping it all on the one day yeah. it's it's, it it's a four next hour friday movie. It's i a four am hour off movie. me no so um can't wait well it's good well for us it's coming out on thursday so so it's funny thursday getting justice league Friday we get Falcon and Winter Soldier. Oh yeah, of course. Um, yeah, yeah, it's gonna be very, very interesting. Uh, March has got a lot of good stuff coming out, so mm. busy month. Yeah, March is the definition of that Jack Harlow song. What's popping? The answer, March. It's popping, folks. You can find me at the underscore C Morris. We're always here. You know where to find us on Fridays. We're sitting here talking Star Wars. It's a great conversation. Thank you, Sean, for hanging out with us, Box. It's always good to see you, sir. Mm-hmm. Remember, folks. We have the high ground. We'll see you next time. Bye.